Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this uh, Thursday as uh, we have finally gotten the two days of rain here in the, in the northeast uh, out of the way. <clears throat> Had some uh, heavy rains go by last night in some areas, and the uh, two-day rain totals were two to four inches. Looking ahead, uh, I uh, see, you know, we were talking about the fact the other day about the, the uh, I think there, there's a lot of tension in the atmosphere, and it's going to be released in some form in terms of some sort of development, some big development somewhere. Um, I know that's a pretty vague statement, but, you know, that's kind of the best I can do. And I think if, you know, if you've been watching my videos long enough, you're seeing how things change just from day to day or on days when I've done two videos in storm situations, how it could even change, you know, several times in the course of a day. This is the NAM model, uh, and and just want to show you that you can take a look at what's happening with low pressure up in Canada. You know, it gradually turns colder as we go into the weekend. Uh, tomorrow looks okay. Now we start to see <clears throat> the development of a precipitation that's coming out uh, from the Gulf states. And by uh, Monday, Sunday afternoon, uh, that precip is now. It got you have to be careful when you use this particular model, but because for some reason it tends to overdo uh, where the precip is. So this is supposed to represent what the radar looks like, but in reality, uh, usually. It's a lot less, and some of the stuff on the leading edge is aloft. So this this is probably more than what it seems. In fact, when we look at uh, the map from respective accumulated precip, in a lot of the areas that it's showing some precipitation, uh, it doesn't really show any anything measurable. So it would imply that at least it might be aloft. But the bottom line is that something is coming uh, out of that particular part of the U the U S. and headed for the East Coast. And I want to um, show you just a uh, we're going to go to the gfs model here because things have changed again uh, with the prospects of whatever's going to happen in, in, with a midwest storm uh, i'm not sure now whether there's going to be one or not um, if we uh, look at what's going on you know the key to all of this going forward has been the energy that's down in the southwest and i'll show you in the upper air in just a second but this is the gfs surface which now Shows very little with this first piece. You, you, it kind of just weakens out. You can see some of that snow up in the Great Lakes, and then it weakens as it goes uh, northeastward. Now, I'm going to tell you that the European is different. The European actually does bring uh, uh, some moisture up for Sunday night into Monday morning, and much of that is either mixed or frozen uh, across parts of northern Pennsylvania, northern New Jersey, and southeastern New York. I think it would be on the order of a cheap thrill if that were to happen. Um, my definition of that is, you know, something like, you know, some places get a coating to an inch or you get a dusting on the car, that kind of thing. It doesn't appear to be a big deal to me. Now, the second low comes out, and you can see the low here. It was a primary low into southern Illinois. And I think what the GFS does probably for too long is that it holds on to this. Instead of weakening the primary, you start to see the uh, isobar stretch here, a secondary low winds up forming. Also, you can see that the model does have an area of frozen uh, into upstate New York, so I think that's a, a distinct possibility as some cold air wedges down from New England. And then that low moves up, and it really, you don't have this Midwest second storm system development at all. It just doesn't happen. It it's all puts all its eggs in that first basket as it goes out. And then it just basically turns cold and dry for the rest of the week going into next weekend where it has this weak system coming down in the northwest flow that produces uh, some snow in parts of the northeast. In the meantime, it also tries to bring in another system, if you look back through here, into the western states. And there you have it. You know, there's, And that gradually works its way down uh, into uh, north Texas with some snows through Wyoming and into Nebraska. I you know I don't know if I really go with this idea at this point um, because uh, overall because uh, yeah the European to me has a lot more logical look to it and what this all hinges on is let me just back it up this is the upper air going into this weekend and what this all really hinges on is the system in the southwest. And you can see it here, right there. Uh, it's being kicked along by this next weather system that's coming in uh, on the northern stream. And that northern stream system seems to be a little bit faster. So this tries to come out and holds together 
uh, better than it did in prior runs. And you can see how it, you can still pick it out here. That little w upper, that upper low becomes this area, this short wave energy, and it's still right there. So that's what represents that low that you saw that it takes up through southern from the Gulf states on up to southern Illinois. Meanwhile, you've got this uh, next system that's coming in, but since it's catching this first energy, it really doesn't have anything to work on. Um, so that's why that we don't see a second storm developing. The European has a different look to it, and I'll show you what the difference is. If we go to the European, the European does two things. First off, here's that first system, which as we move into the future, remains a distinct separate system here, right there, okay? Uh, it crashes this upper ridge that tries to build into the east, and so you have this first system coming out uh, intact with a low that winds up redeveloping along the coast, and it actually produces some uh, precipitation over here in this form of some mixed precipitation or just a cold rain, but it leaves this second system out in the west as a distinct entity to it. So that moves along and then intensifies up in the Great Lakes, and you can see it there all wrapped up. And gradually, as we go forward, the pattern does turn colder. And it seems now that we're now seeing that turning to colder inside the day 10 time frame. In fact, it's inside the seven day time frame now. So that's the, um, the, the uh, positive sign if you're looking for wintertime weather. Let me show you what the European did at the surface because it is a different story here um, with regards to the surface look. And I, I, you know, I wish they would make these maps that were, this is unfortunately because the European is privately owned, so you were only permitted to see publicly whatever they decide to let us see publicly. But this is Monday night where we have low pressure on the European in northern Mississippi. You can see this high that's building into the east, so it's some cold air here, especially at low levels. Then that primary low weakens and goes to Chicago, secondary low forms near North Carolina, but it's not really all that strong. And now you have all this energy that's still in the southwest, and you wind up with a, a cold, an Arctic front. Well, I don't know if it's an Arctic front, but certainly a polar front uh, that moves into the Midwest. But it doesn't really wrap up a deep low until it gets up in the north of Lake Superior. Now, this is for next Thursday evening where it has a very deep low just north of Lake Superior. So this is dragging down cold air. It would probably mean for some big snows in the upper parts of the Midwest. And then that goes eastward into eastern Canada, dragging down cold air. And then we have another system that's getting ready to come out of the Rockies. So the bottom line for me is through all of this is that we have a very, very busy pattern going forward. Uh, and that part of it's going to be active. And we're going to have to start, as we get deeper into the month, we're going to have to start uh, looking at um, you know, colder air getting more and more important. Now, you can, here's the the the, the Europeans' temperatures, uh, which you know go a little bit above normal in the east and below normal in the west of the middle part of next week, and then it's below normal toward the end of the week, and gradually that below normal area um, takes over over time, and we have one more front to get through, and then you have a large area of below normal temperatures. In fact, um, let's uh, widen it out, and you can see. Well, you know what? The hemispheric view kind of makes me dizzy when I look at it. So we'll look at this view. And you can see what's happening over time. You know, in Canada especially, the warm air is just disappearing and it's colder air, colder than normal air is gradually taking over. If we look at the GFS, we'll uh, see the same idea. And uh, in fact, it's a little more extensive on the GFS, really. Um, because of, of, of what it does later next, starting from later next week, you know, we go into below normal temperatures here in the east, and then you get a brief taste of above normal, and then it's back to below normal, um, you know, r right into the 10 to 16 day period. But the whole profile in Canada has changed. So, you know, we'll see what today's model runs do. Uh, I will uh, put up some posts, of course, later today. Um, thank you for those of you who subscribe to my weather app. I really appreciate it. Uh, you can subscribe to local forecasts for New York City, Long Island, uh, Hudson Valley, Connecticut, New Jersey, and Eastern Pennsylvania. It's just a buck a month. You get an ad-free experience, you know, satellites, radars, my opinions, specific forecasts, and more um, on that. So you can download it, and the download is free. 
Um, so uh, anyway, I appreciate those of you who have done that, and I'll have a, put a link up here uh, for those of you who are interested. And uh, we will, uh, of course, have more on this, uh, meteorologistjochoppy.com, weatherlongisland.com, and nycweathernow.com.